in the last class I have discussed uh, with the load carrying capacity of a single pile, but generally pile these are used in a group. So, now today I will discuss about the load carrying capacity of, uh, of the pile or in group or the group action of the pile. Then I will uh, discuss the other method by which we can determine the load carrying capacity of the pile. Now, first I will discuss about the group action of the pile. So, in the group action of the pile, Now, when pile is used in a group, then we can calculate the efficiency of that pile group. Now, that efficiency if we write that this is the efficiency of group or the group efficiency. That we can write in this form, this q u g divided by n into q u. Now, where q u g is load carrying capacity of pile group. and q u is the you can say this is the ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile group and q u is the ultimate of single pile. and n is the number of piles. So, that means, is here n is the number of piles in the group, q u is the ultimate load carrying capacity of the single pile and q u g is the ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile group. So, here to get this group efficiency, you have to calculate the ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile in group, consider this pile as a whole and then this q use the single pile. Now, this uh, now for this smaller spacing, between piles generally efficiency or the group efficiency less than u 1 or less than 100 percent. So, that means, so that it, it indicates that, that that means, here these in, in a group the pile that can fail in as a failure can be occurred as an individual pile failure or failure can be occurred as a group or as a block type of failure or the considering the total all the piles that uh, as a group and that can fail as a whole or as a block type of failure. So, that is one type of failure another is individual pile failure. Now, if the spacing is uh, very um, small then this will occur this uh, group type of failure generally will occur and in that case the efficiency is less than 1. Now, for the larger spacing this group efficiency is equal to 1. So, now for the largest type of spacing the individual pile failure will occur. So, we will get the group failure is equal to the individual pile load carrying capacity into the number of piles. So, that means, u u g will be equal to is n into u g. So, that means, the contribution from each pile 
will summation of contribution of each pile will give the group um, uh, load carrying capacity of the pile. In that case, this uh, efficiency of group will be 1. And if it is less spacing is very small, then we will get the because the overlap due to the overlapping overlapping of the stress zone um, or the influence zone for a single pile individual piles, though that means the, the group failure will occur and that will less than the load carrying capacity of the uh, individual pile. If we sum the all the load carrying capacity of the individual pile, that will be generally more than the uh, pile load carrying capacity as a whole. So, in that case, if the spacing is very small, then the group load carrying capacity is smaller or the lower than the summation of all individual piles load carrying capacity. So, in that case, this uh, efficiency will be less than 1. Now, another thing that for the driven pile loose to medium sand, loose to medium sand, this efficiency can be greater than 1. This is because there is when pile is driven into a loose to medium sand, then sand become dense. So, in that case, because of the installation of the pile, the group can capacity of the pile surrounding the soil, pile surra soil surrounding this pile that get dense. So, that is why the efficiency that will increase. So, these are three possible cases that for the smaller spacing between the piles where the uh, summation of all individual pile load carrying capacity that is uh, more than the group carrying group load carrying capacity of the pile. So, in that case the efficiency will be less than 1. Now, if the larger spacing in that case basically the individual pile failure will occur and if the spacing is very less in the group type of the block type of failure will occur. So, if the spacing is very large, so individual pile failure will occur in that case the group load carrying capacity is equal to the summation of the all individual pile load carrying capacity. Now, in third case in the driven pile, if it is driven in the in the loose to medium uh, sand, in that case the density of the sand, the sand become dense. So, because of this uh, nature, the group carrying capacity or the efficiency of the pile that will increase and that efficiency is sometimes even greater than 100 percent or greater than 1. Now, for um, in we will discuss about how to calculate the group carrying capacity of the pile. So, in that case, uh, we can write that pile group in clay. First, we will uh, calculate the group carrying capacity of the pile if it is in the clay. So, as I have mentioned there are two types of failure, one is that block failure and second one by individual pile failure. So, these two types of failure will occur if the spacing is generally more spacing between the two piles are more then this individual pile failure may occur and if it is less then there is a block failure will occur generally. But in then now for the uh, another thing that is the condition for the clay that generally Bock failure will occur now if the spacing is less than two to three d. Now if the spacing less than two to three d, it is the diameter of the pile, and if the largest spacing, the individual pile failure will occur. In that case, if we calculate u u g that is the group load carrying capacity of the pile that is C u u 
B at the base, then N C, then A B at the base plus P into L into C U U S. So, in that case uh, here the similar to the individual this expression. So, this is the from the um, tip resistance and this is the friction resistance. So, this is the tip resistance and this is frictional resistance. So, now we can write that C u b is the undrained strength of the soil at the base of the pipe. of the clay at the base of the pile. So, this is T resistance is coming from the base. So, this is at the base of the pile. So, similarly Q U S this is the undrained strength of the clay along the surface or length of the pile group or block. Now, the here also you can write this is pile group. Similarly, N C values we can write is equal to 9 like the single pile, then we can write A B is equal to cross section area of the block. This is the cross section area of the block. L is the embedded length of the pile. pile and P B or P that is the perimeter of the block. So, here this U G we are calculating by considering the block failure. because here if you consider this is the block failure and then we calculate this, this is the tip resistance and this is the friction resistance. So, Q u b at the undrained shear strength at the base of the pile, N c is 9, A b is the cross section area of the block, P is the perimeter is the embedded length and Q u is the undrained strength along the surface or the pile group or block. It is the same as the single pile. Now, if we can Similarly, we can write, uh, we can determine the or we can write the expression for the pile in the sand, the same uh, by using the same uh, type of expression for the sand, because this is similar to the single pile, in, but only the thing is the here the cross section area, the uh, expression are same in the cross section area in case of single pile, we have considered as the cross section area of the single pile, here the cross section area we have to consider the block when you calculate the tip resistance. And similarly, in the um, uh, calculation of the single pile friction resistance, we use the, the area is the surface area of the single pile. Here, you have to consider the surface area of the block that is the perimeter and the length of the block. So, the, that is the only difference when you consider the group and the individual failure, individual pile load carrying capacity. So, this is the load carrying capacity for the clay. Similarly, by using the same expression like the single pile uh, in the, in the uh, uh, sand, we can determine the load carrying capacity of the pile in the sand. 
generally and sometimes as I have mentioned that in the driven pile this uh, efficiency is greater than 1. So, but when we uh, design these things we can consider that efficiency is equal to 1 and we can design. So, now for, so that means we, we are uh, now giving the uh, expression for the clay and similarly the same expression as I have given for the single pile that we can use uh, by a slight modification for the cross section area for the base and the cross section area of the surface. Here we have to consider the cross section area of the block and the when you calculate the tip resistance and when the cross section uh, the area of the surface area of the block when you calculate the friction resistance that is the difference between the a single and a group failure. Others the uh, expressions are almost same. So, now we will uh, solve one example by which we can determine that how we can uh, calculate the load carrying capacity of the uh, pile and the single pile and the group piles and then we will uh, determine then the other um, factors also and the spacings also. Suppose uh, a problem is that, that uh, we have one, one block so, this is the arrangement of the pile in that thing, this is the total 16 piles are there. So, for columns and 4 rows, so total 16 piles. Now, it is uh, in the clay soil. Now, diameter of the pile or D of the pile is 300 millimeter. This is the diameter of the pile. Now, the thing is that this is the total number of 16 piles with diameter is 300 millimeter. Length of the pile or embedded pile is 10 meter. Now, unren Q u unren shear strength of the soil is 50 kilo Newton. This is unconfined uh, compressive strength of the soil this q u. So, that means, c we can calculate c u under c u strength of the soil that will be q u divided by 2. So, that is 25 kilo Newton per meter square. So, c u u. So, we are considering the same c u for the surface as well as at the base. So, that so that means, c u b and c u s. Similarly, c u b is equal to c u s equal to C u equal to 25 kilo Newton per meter square. So, Q u equal to 50 kilo Newton per meter square, C u will be Q u by 2 25 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, we have to determine the spacing. What will the spacing such that that group efficiency will be exactly 1. We can take any other value also. So, so we can take the 0 0.9, 0 0.8. So, here we will design this thing such that the group efficiency will be exactly 1. What will be the spacing? So, as I mentioned that here we have to uh, consider the single and as well as the block failure. So, this is the block basically for the group. So, suppose we consider this is the spacing between the space, this is S and similarly, this one is also S. This is S, this is S, this is S. Now, distance from this, because this is the center of the each pile. So, distance from this center to this edge is 0.15 meter. Similarly, this one is also 0.15 meter as similarly, this one is also 0.15 meter and this one is also 0.15 meter, because the total diameter is 0.3 meter. So, half of this is 0.15 
meter. So, as we have <coughs> calculated the group efficiency q u g is n into q u. Now, here our q u g is 1, n is equal to 16, n is the number of pi. So, now if q u g is equal to 1, so that means q u if efficiency is equal to 1. So, that means q u g will be n into q u or q u g equal to 16 into q u. So, now first we will calculate the q u g and here another thing the condition is that we can neglect the Tip resistance of this pile. That means the resistance we are getting, so we can neglect it, neglect, neglect the bearing at the tip of the piles because these are the <coughs> in the clay, so that in the uh, these are the friction piles, so the resistance coming from the friction will be more as compared to the resistance coming from the tip. So, the one condition that we can we are neglecting that friction components. So, that means, q u g will be equal to that I have mentioned that is the 16 q u. So, the single pile capacity is 16 into alpha into c u into a s area at the surface. So, now here this is 16 into alpha into C u is 25, area is pi into 0.3 into 10 is the length. So, area is pi d l. So, pi into 0.3 into point into l is the 10 meter. So, I am thinking this alpha you have to calculate. So, in the last class I have given one chart to calculate the how to calculate the uh, or table how to calculate this alpha value. Now, here based on this u value I am giving you another uh, figure by which we can determine the value of alpha. Now, that figure is proposed or uh, this is proposed by the Tomlinson. Nineteen seventy-nine, and this is for the driven pile. So in this figure, so this is so this point we can say this is alpha is 1.5, this one is 1, this is 0.5 and this is 0 and this side is, is 0.5 uh, sorry tw uh, this is 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. This is the value of C u, it is in kilo Newton per meter square. So, the points that we are getting, so these are the points, so you can if we join these points, so this is the chart. So, this is from here we can determine what will be the value of alpha corresponding to 25, because our C u value is 25 kilo, uh, kilo Newton per meter square. So, now what will be the value of alpha as corresponding to 25 kilo Newton per meter square. So, in this value we can calculate this alpha is coming 0.95. So, we can calculate the value of q 
q g in terms of 16 into q u and this is 16 into alpha is 0 0.95 into 25 is c u into pi into 0 0.3 into 10. So, this is this part is 16 is that and this basically this part is 0 0.95 alpha into 25 into pi into 0 0.3 into 10 this is this total thing is equal to the individual pi load carrying capacity ultimate pi load carrying capacity of the individual pi. So, the total load carrying capacity is 3, 5, 8, 1.42 kilo Newton. That is the load carrying capacity of the pile in group. So, here all the calculations we are doing for the compressive um, uh, load carrying capacity of the pile. The next one we will we can calculate this Q u g in terms of block failure. This is this is in terms of individual failure. Now, other times in terms of block failure, we can write this is P perimeter into L into C u. So, when we are calculating this block failure, here we consider that our alpha is basically 1. The reason is that here is the alpha is the addition. So, that means, this here the addition you are this is the uh, addition factor and this addition you are considering when it is a single pile that means, here the addition is between the pile surface and the soil. So, that is why you have to consider alpha value because here two different materials we are considering this is the pile ma uh, different materials and the soil is another different materials, but when you are considering the block as a block failure. So, there this blocks this side this is the interaction between the soil and soil. So, both the same material that is why you are considering here when you consider this uh, block failure you consider alpha equal to 1, but when you consider the individual pile failure that is the interaction between the pile surface or pile material and the soil. So, the two different material that is why you consider different alpha value. But here interaction between the two same soil, here we will consider the alpha equal to 1, because it is the interaction between soil and soil when it is a block. So, now here we can write this P is the perimeter is 4 into 3 s, because if I look this uh, block total. So, here we are considering the block failure, this most of the surface here interaction is soil to soil, but for individual piles the interaction between soil and pile. So, that is we are considering alpha in the block, but the side one is 3 s plus 0.15 plus 0.15. So, 3 s plus 0.3 is one side, another is also 3 s plus 0.3, because here it is a square type of arrangement. So, that means, we can write the perimeter is 3 s plus 0.3 into 4, because this is one side another 4 side into L into 25. So, this is 3000 S plus 300. Now, for efficiency is equal to 1, we can write that 3000 S plus 300 that is equal to 3581.42. So, now from here we can calculate that S is coming 1094 millimeter or S is equal to 3.65 D, where D is the diameter of the pile, this is the diameter of the pile. Now, again another thing that you have to uh, um, check it that I S code recommends that to I S 2911 this is part 1 1979 that for the minimum spacing or S minimum that is equal to 2.5 D for point bearing pile. Point 
piles and equal to 3 d for friction pile. Friction pile. So, here it is minimum space in recovery, here we are designing it is for the friction pile, the minimum requirements is 3 d, but here our calculation is coming 3.65 d, that means it is ok. So, to get a efficiency equal to exactly 1, we have to provide a spacing 3.65 d. So, that spacing we can provide to get a spacing exactly 1, uh, exactly efficiency exactly 1. Now, if we want to design it for the different efficiency, then you have to put that value and then corresponding spacing you have to calculate. So, first we assume the diameter, that diameter we will choose and based on that we can determine what will be the uh, spacing required to get a particular amount of efficiency, group efficiency. So, in the next uh, section I will discuss about this, these are the, so uh, in the first class I have mentioned about the, this the four different ways by which we can determine the load carrying capacity of the pile. The first one the by the static expressions or the formulae that part I have, I have finished. The next one that I will uh, discuss about the pile load test. So, by pile load test also we can determine the load carrying capacity of the pile. So, next one is the pile load test that we will discuss uh, in, in that section. So, now in the pile load test. So, this part we will discuss about this um, load test or the on piles. So, by pile load test also we can determine the load carrying capacity. Now, this is basically this um, again this pile load test on any field test is suitable for cohesionless soil. Now, here we will do the, the different types of pile load test we can perform, one is compression test, one is pull out or tension test and one is lateral load test. So, here we will discuss about the compression test, how we can do the compression test to determine the load carrying capacity of the pile. So, here basically you are uh, uh, discussing the compression test. In addition to this, we can do the pull out test or the tension test or lateral uh, test to know the lateral load carrying capacity of the pile. Now, before we um, uh, go to the pile load test, there are few things that we should know that is one is initial test and next one is the routine test. So, initial test on term that is this is carry out on the test pile, this is the carry out on the test pile to estimate the allowable load carrying capacity of the pile or to know the settlement of the pile corresponding to the working load. Now, that is the test pile. So, this is the, the test pile that we carry out on the pile to estimate the allowable load and to predict the settlement at the uh, working load. Now, routine test carried uh, this carried out to check the working pile load to and to know the corresponding settlement of the pile corresponding that working load. So, that in the routine test will perform on the working pile and initial test that will perform on the test pile. So, now this uh, thing is the more than the condition is that more than Two hundred piles, the minimum two test is required. So, more than two hundred piles, minimum two initial test is required, and the for the routine test, this minimum.
number of test is generally half percent of the pile used or that can vary up to 2 percent or more. So, that means, the initial test that is conducted on the test piles and the routine test that is conducted on the working piles. Now, in test piles mean these piles are constructed to for the testing purpose, this is not constructed for the load carrying capacity or load carrying purpose of the superstructure. It is not constructed for the working uh, condition, it is just constructed for the testing purpose and then once the test is over, then these piles are not used. So, these are not used to carry the load which is coming from the superstructure and routine piles are routine tests are conducted on the working piles. See, working piles are the piles where the actual load of the superstructure that will come it will work. So, that means, the routine test will conduct for the working piles on the working piles and initial test will conduct on the test pile. Now, more than 200 piles minimum 2 test piles or initial test these are required and for the minimum number of the routine test is generally half percent of the pile used or it up to 2 percent or nearly more. Now, when this this test pile, so now that um, thing is that a test pile and working piles, so used only to load test does not carry load of the superstructure that I have already I mentioned this thing. Now, the minimum test or the load that these piles are taken. the minimum test load on the test pile that is equal to 2 times the safe load. The minimum test load on the uh, minimum test load on the test pile is 2 times the safe load. So, this safe load we can determine by using the static expression that I have already explained. So, now this load test are attained a value of this load test is generally 2 to the safe load or the load at which the total settlement of the pile is 10 percent of pile diameter in case of single pile and 40 millimeter in case of group pile. So, that means, this minimum test load on the test pile is 2 times the safe load or the load at which the total settlement of the pile 10 per attains the 10 percent of the pile diameter for the single pile or 40 millimeter for the group pile. Similarly, for the working piles that means, the routine test the test load is generally up to 1.5 times the safe load or the load at which total settlement is 12 millimeter again for the single pile and 40 millimeter 
for group pile whichever is lesser. Here also this is also whichever is lesser. So, that means, the these are the all the information regarding the initial test, routine test, then, then, then the, that means, the initial test is conducted on the test pile, the test piles of the pile which is constructed for the testing purpose, not for the, it will not take the load which is coming from the superstructure and the routine test is conducted on the working pile. Now, these working piles are the piles which will take the load which is coming from the superstructure. Now, more than 200 piles minimum 2 test piles are required initial test that is required and min, num, minimum number of test is half percent for the pile used the routine test or 2 percent and more. In the test pile the minimum test load is 2 times the safe load or the load at which the settlement attains a value of 10 percent of the diameter for single pile or and 40 millimeter for the group pile whichever is lesser. And working pile the test load up to which 1.5 times of the safe load or the load at which is total settlement is 12 millimeter for the single pile or 40 millimeter for the group pile whichever is lesser. So, these are the condition for the different test and the different type of piles which are used for the pile load test. Now, next we will discuss about the how to will calculate the load carrying capacity of the pile by using the pile load test. This 2911, this is part 4, 1979. So, this IS code according to this IS code. Now, load is applied on the RCC cap over the pile and the applied with an increment of 20 percent of the safe load and corresponding settlement of the pile is recorded by using the at least 3 dial gauge attached in the pile cap. So, pile cap is used and where the load is applied with an increment of 20 percent of the safe load and as I mentioned the safe load is calculated based on the, the static expressions and the settlement corresponding to the each incremental load is recorded which is measured by using at least 3 dial gauges. Now, the allowable load, how we will get the allowable load of the pile? So, now how we can determine the allowable load on a single pile? So, one first condition is that two third the final load at which total settlement attains a value of 12 millimeter. So, if that means the two third of the final load at which the total settlement attains a value of 12 millimeter. So, that means if nothing is specified then we can consider the permissible settlement of the single pile is 12 millimeter and the load at which this 12 millimeter is attained, we have to consider two third of that final load. Now, if any permissible settlement is mentioned other than this 12 millimeter, then we have to calculate the load two third of that final load at which the total settlement attains that permissible limit which is specified. Now, in or in the second case that 50 percent 
of the final load at which the total settlement is 10 percent of the pile diameter. This is for uniform diameter pile and 7.5 percent of bulb diameter is for under rim pile. So, that means, the condition says is that one is the first one and second one is the 50 percent of the final load at which the total settlement is 10 percent of the pile diameter for the uniform diameter pile and 7.5 percent of the pile diameter for under rim pile. Now, another condition is that now this we can use the third one or the third condition this is the single pile. Now, for the cyclic test this is the for the static test compressive now if we can do the cyclic test if we want to know the tip resistance as well as the friction resistance of the pile separately now if we go the static test for the single pile that will give us the total resistance of the pile now if we know want to know the uh, tip resistance and the friction resistance separately then we have to go for the cyclic test now for the cyclic test pile load test. So, that means, the two third of the load final load at which the total settlement is equal to 6 millimeter. So, the here we can replace this one this is uh, similar to the number 1 condition, but here this is two third of the final load at which total settlement is equal to 6 mm. So, the minimum of all this condition that we will we'll consider as our allowable load on a single pile that is determined from the based on pile load test. Now, for the group pile or the group pile so same thing we can use some condition so that uh, the first one is similar that the final load at which settlement is equal to 25 millimeter. So, now this load test we can perform on the single pile as well as on the group pile. In general in the group piles if the permiss is nothing is specified then the permissible limit is settlement is 25 milli, uh, millimeter. Now, the final load at which this settlement is attained that will one condition. So, now if any other permissible settlement is mentioned then you have to calculate that final load corresponding to that specified permissible settlement. If nothing is specified then we will consider for the group permissible settlement of the pile is 25 millimeter. Now, B is that a two third of 
final load at which the total settlement attains a value of 40 millimeter. So, this is the second condition, the two third of the final at which total settlement attains a value of 40 millimeter. So, the minimum of these two will consider the allowable load carrying capacity of that group. So, these are the conditions that you have to satisfy when you calculate, when you determine the load carrying capacity of the pile, single pile as well as the pile group. So, these are the conditions. So, I have uh, discussed about the initial test, the routine test, then test pile and the working pile and what are the conditions or by which we can by using those conditions, we have to determine the load carrying capacity of the single pile as well as the group pile. Now, this up to this we have discussed how the load carrying capacity of the pile. So, this will give us the total load carrying capacity of the pile or allowable load carrying capacity of the pile. Now, if we want to determine or we want to know the the resistance that we are getting in individually from the tip as well as from the friction, then you have to go for the cyclic pile load test. In the next uh, next class, I will discuss about the cyclic pile, pile load test and by which we can determine what is the contribution from the friction part and what is the contribution from the tip resistance of the pile individually. Thank you.